Hello students. I am going to make some comments on two of the subjects that are on our syllabus on the end of World War II. So the first is D-Day. What is it? What's its significance? Why did it happen? These sorts of basic questions that I want to highlight. So first of all, what is it? It was a massive amphibious invasion. The Allies did it on, they planned it and executed it. Secretly it was planned. Uh, the, the name for it was Operation Overlord. It was executed at beginning uh, at dawn on June the 6th, 1944. And it, the invasion, it was the largest amphibious invasion in the world, ever. Um, some, of, some critics say, oh, but what about the invasion where the Germans went into to Russia, Barbarossa, or I think that's what it's called. Well, that was a land invasion. So yes, there were millions there, but that, that's not the same. Or if you want to reach back to classical times, you can say, what about the um, what about in the Trojan War, where the classical Greeks invaded, um, went across it and tried to ca recapture Helen uh, that had been kidnapped away. Actually, she volunteered and she was perfectly happy to go. What about that? What about that time where this was the Armada? that was launched and, and Helen was the face that launched a thousand ships. Well, first of all, if that indeed did happen, that it was Helen who that, um, inspired that, it was more likely a commercial colonization um, incident fight between um, Greece and Asia Minor. And second of all, a thousand ships. Well, we know that with the invasion on uh, of the D-Day that there were 5,000 ships, at least. So, no comparison. So here we have this massive invasion. It was planned by the Allies to be executed. Uh, the, the leader of it who was in, in, in charge was General Dwight D. Eisenhower. All the, the Allies that participated were the Americans, the Brits, uh, the Free French, those that were still in the resistance, joined, and then many other smaller countries in Europe that could join in. The Americans provided the, the bulk of the, the troops. Uh, it was, as I say, a massive uh, operation with thousands of ships, thousands of paratroopers who came in, thousands of aircraft that provided cover and uh, brought in the paratroopers. Uh, they brought in tons of supplies um, and uh, as I say, th thousands of, of, um, of American, uh, Americans provided the bulk of the, the, the uh, expedition. Uh, I've, I've seen different reports, but 150,000, 185,000 American troops, but and it wasn't just a one-day thing. It lasted for several days, and then after they were successful, they stayed almost for a full month before they were able to capture the countryside and displace the Germans, defeat the Germans. So all in all, during that month time period, there were one million plus troops, 200,000 vehicles. 750,000 pound tons of supplies, a massive effort. And where did they, they land? Um, Omaha Beach is the, the most well-known of the, of the five places where they landed. This is in Normandy, which is northwestern France. Um, Omaha Beach, because that was where so much of the casualties uh, took place. Uh, but also Utah Beach. Uh, Gold Beach, Juno, and Soar. These were um, places that they, they landed. Um, so we have 
the scene, and, and those of you who have maybe seen uh, the movie um, Saving Private Ryan, I have read the reviews. I, I have not seen it. I'm not sure I ever will. But this idea of how the troops came ashore, they came into the water, they, many of them were shot down before they even reached the beaches, and there the, the, they come in waves. And as they come on to the beaches, many of them are gunned down and are pinned down on the beaches uh, under heavy German fire. So um, it was um, a massive invasion, and ultimately, ultimately, after great loss of life, it did succeed. So th another question we want to ask about D-Day is, why, what, why did they do this? Why attempt this? Well, previously, uh, the pr British Prime Minister, Winston Churchill, had wanted to and had uh, promoted the Italian invasion from the south, coming in, as he said, on the soft underbelly of Europe, saying this will be much easier than he didn't want to lose so many men. Um, so, and so that had been attempted and was still in progress, and it turned out not to be easy and not to be um, entirely successful. So that campaign was still ongoing. The, the, the Germans were ready for them, and there it was. Uh, and the, the, the territory was mountainous, so so the um, so that's one reason why the the invasion was taking place it, it, um, in order to defeat the Germans. Another reason was that Stalin in Russia wanted to the West to open a second to open a second front on the West because he was taking the and the Russians were taking the brunt of it on the Eastern Front. And so he was always um, pleading and, and demanding almost that the other allies open up this Western Front to take some of the pressure off off the Russian off the Russians and Stalin. Um, it's kind of hard to have much sympathy. I, I don't have a whole lot of sympathy with Stalin's argument. I do have sympathy with the Russian people because they suffered horrifically. They they had the most losses in World War II. But Stalin himself was a big part of the problem. He is the one who made that non-aggression pact in 1939 with Hitler. He's the one that made that deal with that monstrous, murderous dictator. He's the one that allowed Hitler to do what he was doing in Europe by taking the by having Hitler not to have a two-front war. And he, he should have known, he, uh, why would he trust someone like Hitler? Um, the other th thing that comes to mind when we talk about Stalin and how we don't have sympathy for his, for his plight is because of his purges, beginning in 1936 and going on for a couple of years, he decimated the Red Army. He not only the army. I've told you before about the 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 peasants who suffered. I mean, he would round up people by the thousands and ship them off to Siberia, execute them. So he he uh, he damaged his own army horribly by his purges. And his only reason for doing so was they opposed him. He wanted. He was. It was all about his power. And so he, as I say. Yeah, he, he was in a bad way, but who makes a pact with the devil? Someone like Stalin. So that's the why it was done. Again, the casualties were horrific, but when you say casualties, that means both dead and wounded. Uh, for D-Day, the Americans lost 6,600. The Brits lost 2,700. The Canadians were involved, 940. Um, casualties and wounded for this expedition were um, a total of 10,000. So uh, that's D-Day. That's not the rest of the campaign. Within a month, though, as I said, there were a million troops there in, in France and um, tons of supplies and ultimately was it successful? Did it, did it accomplish its purpose? And for that, you can go to our textbook, McClay, 
In fact, you can read a lot of this in McClay. Um, there's also a, a very nice map of what's going on in World War II, the European theater in these final days uh, with the Allies and the Axis powers. Uh, if you look on page 330, you can study that map. You can see where D-Day occurred. But um, what, what does McClay have to say about the success, the results of D-Day? He says, if you look on page 333, in retrospect, it is clear that D-Day broke the back of the Nazi effort. By September, American and British troops had crossed into Germany and begun to push toward the capital city of Berlin from the west, even as Russian troops advanced toward Berlin from the east. So it did make the difference. Um, one of the questions is, as we're reading that, that selection, that excerpt, one question that comes to mind is, what was the Allies' situation, the Americans and the Brits versus the Russians? And the question was, who will get to Berlin first? Winston Churchill didn't trust, didn't trust uh, Stalin. He said, the further east we shake hands, the better. FDR was much more trusting, probably gullible, and did trust Stalin to the detriment of the country. So, um, I, I would like to, um, to, to go to February, this, this uh, D-Day operation continued, and, and then subsequently there were battles in Belgium, that's the famous Battle of the Bulge, in December, of 1944. That battle took six weeks. It was horrific losses. The Germans were trying to delay, delay, which they did, but ultimately, of course, as you know, they, um, they did lose that war. Meanwhile, in the spring of 1945, the Russians were surging from the east, going through P Poland, with horrific results to the Polish people, by the way. Uh, prior to that spring of 1945, there is an event which is, is also an issue that I mentioned in your topics to consider, and that is what happened in Yalta, this Yalta conference that took place in February of 1945. So the question that I posed is, who met there, what was the purpose, what was accomplished? So you, do you, I'm sure you know that the, the big three that met at this conference, oh, and I have a, a photo of that, of the, of the Yalta conference. Um, y Yalta, by the way, is a seaside resort in Russia to the south. So the big three were there, Stalin, Roosevelt, and Churchill, and they met to discuss what are the plans for post-war Europe? What is going to happen with the settlement, and of course we've got Churchill being distrustful of Stalin. He only, he said, in order to defeat Hitler, I would make a pact with the devil, but he definitely didn't trust Stalin. Um, their purpose in meeting was to decide what, what post-war Europe was going to look like. And what they decided at Yalta and this, this decision, these decisions were kept secret for many months. They made an agreement, several agreements, and first they agreed that after the German surrender, which was imminent, that German territory would be divided into four occupation zones. Uh, the four occupying powers, of course, would be Britain, France, the United States, and the Soviet Union. And they would be responsible for governing the different zones. Uh, the city of Berlin, although located in the heart of the Soviet zone, would be jointly governed by all four powers. There were other agreements made, but principally the one that we're most interested in at this point is Soviet troops at this point had already occupied eastern Poland and they were heading for Berlin. So Roosevelt agreed, or he did consent, to allow the Soviets to remain in Poland and even to annex eastern Poland to the Soviet Union. In return, 
Stalin pledged that the Soviet Union would allow the government of Poland to hold free elections to choose their own government. So here it's trusting Stalin, you give him territory, and then he's going to do the right thing. We'll look at this again to discuss whether or not Stalin agreed, abided by his agreement, and I think given the way I'm framing this, you've already guessed the answer to this. Um, so that's the Yalta Conference. Uh, I would like to make just a couple more comments about the Yalta Conference. Um, uh, FDR was, was quite cosmopolitan, but at the superficial level, because he had traveled frequently in Europe, even as a, a teenager. Now, of course, we're not very impressed. I'm sure you're not very impressed with this these days because teenagers backpack all over Europe these days. But in the 1940s, only wealthy people could do such a thing. So because he traveled, he felt like he was a world traveler. And um, he w now he was, I would say, shrewd, very shrewd in, in domestic U.S. politics. But he was quite naive in trusting the Soviets. And this was the case with many intellectuals in America um, in, in, at the time. Um, and, and to just give you a, an indication of this, he said the Soviet Union he regarded as, quote, a peace-loving people's democracy. This is the communist regime that he's talking about. And he calls Stalin Uncle Joe, uh, and an elegant, old-fashioned gentleman. Uh, so obviously Stalin had fooled FDR, and we will see that Stalin breaks these promises made. So those are my few comments on these first two topics, and um, please do continue to study hard. I, I know you're doing your best there, and I miss you all. I'll be back for the next lecture.